Just ahead on this week's edition of Being Well, Sherry Burcham from the University of Illinois Extension will be stopping by to talk to us about brain fitness. You already work your heart and your muscles through exercise, so why not the brain? Stay tuned to learn more about how to keep your mind active and healthy for years to come. That's next on Being Well, so stay right here. Sherry, thanks for coming on Being Well. You know, on this show, we often talk about physical fitness, working out our heart and our muscles. Today, we're talking about brain fitness. Um, tell us a little bit, where did this idea for brain fitness or brain training come from? How long has it been around? Well, it's, it's relatively new. Um, the research uh, has really came out in the last 10 to 15 years on um, challenging your brain and, and brain fitness. Um, the other day, went to uh, Google and Googled brain fitness mm -hmm. and found about 40 million hits now. So it's something that is, is really trendy as mm -hmm. well. And um, the researchers have found two major things. And, and one is that um, the, the more that you, you know, become engaged and train your brain, mm -hmm. you know, the better your cognitive skills are, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and that will prevent hopefully you know, future memory problems. Do you think, I, I had just had this thought, do you think because we're such a cell phone society and everything is right there that we've kind of forgotten to, you know, like recall phone numbers, for example, from memory? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I think we're all um, guilty of that mm -hmm. and that we have to make a, an effort to um, go back kind of the old school and, <laughs> and because, yeah, I think our brains get lazy whenever mm -hmm. we don't challenge it and try to remember things, um, it's, it's too handy to put on the cell. So tell us a little bit, what, what exactly is brain fitness or brain training? I mean, brain training, it, it's, a, it's a variety of things. Um, there are many different ways to basically what they call train your brain. Um, it's not just uh, somebody doing their daily crossword puzzle or their Sudoku puzzle and saying I'm staying with it because of that. Um, it's, it's doing things that are a challenge mm -hmm. to you because if it gets too easy, then then it's it's like if you're lifting weights and those five pound weights all of a sudden become extremely easy for you, you're not challenging yourself mm -hmm. anymore. You have yeah. to add and you have to do a variety that makes sense. of things. So um, some different activities that are counted basically as brain fitness can be um, anything from learning a new language. Okay. Um, to uh, learning different um, card games or board games. Um, it could be traveling because just, you know, if you're traveling abroad and you're learning mm -hmm. new things as you go, uh, it, can, it can be even um, things that are hands-on like woodworking or learning a new dance or anything that, you know, you, you really have to think it through mm -hmm. and, and learn to do. And I would imagine, I mean, while we're working, our brains are obviously more active. Are, do you find or have you found that, you know, when people retire, you know, you're not engaged in problem, maybe some of the same things you did when you were working, that your brain kind of maybe does get a little lazy if you don't keep up with some of this stuff. Right. And, and to say the same about those who work, I think a lot of them think that they're, that they're staying intellectually challenged because they're working. But you can't get into that rut as well if, if, say, you're a data entry person and you're doing, you know, computer all day long, the same thing. Again, it's doing the same exact thing and you're not, it's, it's not a challenge anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to find that variety. So when you're working out or you're running or whatever, there's easy ways to measure your fitness. You know, three months ago you could run two miles, now you can run 15 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we know we can fit a measure our fitness. How can you measure brain fitness? Is that possible even? I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure like just us as lay people mm -hmm. could probably, I mean, you, you could probably sense like if you're remembering more, I mean, I, you know, it's an internal sense, but uh, researchers definitely have um, ways of gauging that. They've, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, again, research being done on brain fitness and how it relates to our overall health and and lots of studies out there where they're um, intensely training 
seniors mm -hmm. um, with different um, testing of different parts of the brain and then retesting them later and finding great, great strides. So, so um, if we're starting this, and we'll talk a little bit about who should start and when, talk about some of the long-term benefits that you can, that people can hope for if they do some brain fitness and brain training. Well, you know, the long-term benefits are that um, hopefully you'll be able to recall a lot better, mm -hmm. um, recognize things a lot better, um, your short and long-term memory will improve. Uh, there, there, there's many things that you hope to see. And in the, in the final long run, as you, as you are aging, you hope to be able to stave off, you know, some cognitive decline that comes mm -hmm. along with, with aging which we can't totally prevent, right? but right. we can um, stall it. So talk about the aging brain a little bit. What kind of, do you know like what sort of happens with our brains as we get older? <laughs> Does it sort of like turn to mush or what's going on inside the head? <laughs> well, you know, um, there's, a co there's a couple myths um, that researchers have debunked basically. Mm -hmm. And one myth was that as you get older, your IQ drops, that your intelligence drops. Mm -hmm. And they found that that was absolutely not true mm -hmm. because what had happened really was and it makes sense is that they were administering tests to seniors the same as they were administering tests to younger people and the seniors hadn't actually taken pen and paper tests for years for and years time. and years yeah. and years mm -hmm. and they were out of practice okay and the young ones knew how to do it and so when the seniors were trained in how to do the testing they found that there was there was no difference at all. Mm -hmm. They were doing well, so that myth was debunked, as well as that you can't learn anything new when you get <laughs> older. You know, you can't teach an old dog new right. tricks. <laughs> That's absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. It just might take them a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, there's various things in a, in a normal brain um, as it ages. Um, you know, we have neurons in our brains mm -hmm. and um, and connectors that um, those neurons they they will die um, and the connections that they make, you'll lose those mm -hmm. as well as there's some chemicals in our brains that will decrease and make, make us a little slower. And when you, um, when you challenge yourself and you exercise your brain, so to speak, basically you are building up more and more and more and more neurons mm -hmm. and connectors. And the way I explain to my audiences when I do my classes is that it's like you're building roadways um, all your life. If you start as young as you possibly can, mm -hmm. your whole life you can continue to make like little extra roadways and intersections in your brain so that as you do age and natural aging occurs or you have disease and the neurons start dying and then the roadways close, mm -hmm. you have others. You have other routes. <laughs> yeah, so you basically padded your brain and uh -huh. you've, you've built a little e extra routes. That so, makes sense. So that, that's kind of how I explain it. So when do you recommend people start brain fitness? As soon training? as now. Now, right <laughs> now. now. Yes. <laughs> um, they say the earlier, the better. Um, in fact, you know, um, as far as in terms of Alzheimer's or dementia, um, it's, it's not something, even if you would start really young, you can't um, avoid it right. if, if that's the way you're meant, you're going to be. Mm -hmm. But... Um, they say the earlier you begin and you continue to, to intellectually challenge yourself and work yourself, then that will push that off mm -hmm. farther and farther and give you a better chance okay. at cognitive health. So how, if you're going to, we're going to get into actually some actual brain activities in just a minute, but how, so start now, right? Exactly. Um, how much, how many times a day, how long, you know, as a fitness person, how many, t how many days a week do I need to do this to really see some benefit? All the research that I've looked at, I haven't seen any like prescription of anything. <laughs> um, just mainly what I've seen is it's been daily. You know, okay. That's been the, the key word there is it's daily. daily. I, and I don't know how long, just as long as you're doing something daily. And like with seniors, that's important because a lot of them, if you think about some of the seniors that are home isolated mm -hmm. by themselves, um, you know, if they just have something that they do at least once a day, to help work their mm -hmm. brains. I mean, That's I even helpful. think about it like when you go on vacation from work for a week or two, that first day back to work, you're just, if you haven't typed anything for a week or two, I mean, it's, it's amazing how quickly you forget how to 
you know, do certain things when you've been, you know, laying on a beach all day or whatever. I, I, I know exactly what you're saying because I, I was thinking about that. It's like you feel like you're kind of in a fog when you get back. Right. Like you have to reintegrate yes. into it because you haven't been, you, you know, Using it's like you're in that charging it back up again. <laughs> and, and that brings up a good point is, um, you know, other things that will help with your brain health is not just challenging your brain, but it's social engagement and interaction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've taken a break and you're away from everybody, it does take a while to kind of get back in the groove. Mm -hmm. um, and then other things like good diet and good exercise and decreased stress mm -hmm. and plenty of good sleep <laughs> also helps. Good also helps. So mm -hmm. what types of there's all different, explain there, there are different functions of our brain. There's long-term, short-term, talk about what those different functions are and how, um, what's imp what of those is improved by doing some brain fitness training? Well, your, your brain, um, it's a big, amazing thing, you know, and it's limitless. And you've got, you know, your long-term memory and short-term memory. Mm -hmm. Long-term memory is a limitless cache of, you know, you can't ever say your brain's full because that's not true. <laughs> it, you know, I, when people have trouble remembering, recalling something, it's not that it's not in there. It just takes a while to get it back out. Right. You know, that's yeah. your recall. Short-term memory, of course, is, you know, is, is a shorter version of that. It's in there. Critical thinking, which is basically when you're balancing your checkbook, you're thinking through math problems, you're, you know, having to solve problems, mm -hmm. those types of things. And then there is your spatial reasoning also, which... Um, is, that one's a little harder to explain, but it's like your ability to say put jigsaw puzzles together or do a Rubik's Cube mm -hmm. or, you know, size and dimensions, mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. And it's important to train all of those things. That's, okay. You know, that's where we come into the, I do crossword puzzles so I'm going to be okay. You know, mm -hmm. that's just one thing that you're, you're working on. Mm -hmm. You have to try and exercise all of those. Right. Functions. Well, I know people who will just watch Jeopardy every day just to kind of, but that's recall and memory, but that's not getting probably the, um, you know, the spatial things, you know, right. you need to go out in your garage and build something. Right. <laughs> or solve a puzzle. <laughs> I had just read, actually, we were talking about brain, how much information our brain can store. I just got my edition of Smithsonian Magazine, and there's a thing about brains, <laughs> and it says in there that the brain can store 100 terabytes of information and the average computer stores I don't know 10 20 that's or it's not amazing even, yeah. it's yeah well you know you always hear that I don't know what the percentage but we only use like a percentage right. of our brains and right. the rest isn't isn't tapped yeah. so, so there's plenty of storage space in there it's just a matter of getting it out getting it out <laughs> okay so let's get down we, we kind of set this up let's talk about what kind of activities what what sort of things do we need to do to build our short-term long-term memory our cognitive what are some we've talked about things like sudoku and crossword puzzles but there's more to it than that yes yes okay we're gonna get back into this now all right she's okay. gonna quiz me now we're gonna see how well i do so okay <laughs> at notice i have all the answers okay well so, I, can, I can look at them yeah so I'll look yeah tv here well for one thing i do want to um i will mention briefly a lot of people come to the seminars that i give and they're like i just want to learn um I just, I just want to get over this everyday forgetfulness mm -hmm. sort of thing, which we all have. It right. doesn't matter what age you are. And some little simple tricks, you know, we call, one thing we call chunking, um, which is your social security number. Mm -hmm. It's, you remember it because it's in chunks of numbers, sure. okay? Or your okay. telephone number, chunks of numbers, mm -hmm. if you're not just getting contacts out of your cell yes, phone, right? <laughs> right, okay. So, um, so it's, it's the same for, you know, if you have a long uh, number that you need to memorize, mm -hmm. chunk it just like you would those others, right. and that's easier to remember. Same as your grocery, your grocery list. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us write it down and then forget it at home. You yes. know, so um, things like if you've written it out and you think, well, if you can chunk it like by the aisle of the grocery store that you're using, everything in that aisle, okay. you, you know, and then the next aisle, or you can chunk it in, um, all the dairy products together, mm -hmm. all the meat products together. That's a good yeah. idea. It, 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 instead of being randomly mm -hmm. everywhere, okay. kind of helps. So okay. chunking, I'm chunking, write that down. yes, <laughs> is, helps. Um, 
just paying attention I have to mention is <laughs> as another, I'm writing is another writing, thing. I'm well, you know, because a lot of times, how many times you've met somebody, and immediately after you meet them, you're like, "What was their name?" Oh, I, right. I cannot remember what or they you just see said. Somebody, their name. You can't remember your name, and you want to say, "Hey, you." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and sometimes it's not that we forgot; it's just that we never really paid attention in right. the first place. Right. You know. So you know, paying attention is matters. It, paying attention. Is um, some stuff that I teach um, our seniors, uh, and it's kind of fun because it, it's reminiscing for them mm -hmm. too, is you know, having fun with language. Um, trying to remember things using fun language. Like, how many times have you said righty-tighty, lefty-loosey? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's just something that's in there mm -hmm. that we've done, but right. and that you had fun with language and you remember. Um, some other things like spring forward. Fall back. Fall back. Mm -hmm. You know, we remember that way. Um, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So those types of things, you know, um, having fun with language, we can kind of remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. So short-term memory, there's some ways that you can um, uh, practice that. This is what I seem to have a problem with. Like here at work, I'll be walking down the hall ready to do something, and then I go, Whoa, what did I? What was I doing? So I need help with the short-term okay. memory. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do, this is actually from a brand new lesson that just came out, and I haven't even done this with okay. anyone yet, okay? Um, I'm going to recite four sentences, random sentences. Okay. And I want you to be paying attention to the last word of each sentence. Okay. Because when I'm done, I want you to can tell I write them back it? to me. Can no, I write you cannot down? write them down. No, you can't write them down. I put my pen down. Okay, so <laughs> listen to these. Michelle has a softball game tonight at River Road Park. Todd went down to the bakery to buy himself a cinnamon roll. Agnes taught Mary the quick step at the Aragon Ballroom. The instructor at summer camp canceled swim lessons due to rain. Okay, park, <laughs> roll, rain, uh, and I can't remember the third one. Ballroom. Ballroom, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what item was bought at the bakery? The cinnamon roll. Very good, <laughs> very good, okay, okay, very good. Yeah, I am. Um, when I did this to me, I for some reason instead of ballroom said swim park. I have no idea why. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that messes so up. This, this is for your short-term memory. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is just to quiz you. Yeah. Right. On your short-term memory. All right. Um, another thing that we can do is I can give you a picture. Okay. Okay. And um, I don't know if you can see this, but and I want you to study that picture okay. briefly. All right. It's an old picture. It is an old picture, and I apologize. Turn of the century, but yeah, people, women in dresses, and mm -hmm. yeah, yes, okay. women in dresses, men in overalls. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're farming. They all have overhauls on. Yep, I think okay. they're out in the field. Okay, well, it's called down in the farm, a hot day in yeah. the field. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take it away. I know you didn't get to look at it very long, but do you remember how many of them had umbrellas? Three. Very good. They did. Do you recall how many had hats? Mm, boy, seven? No. <laughs> there was five. Okay. But two didn't have them on their heads. Oh, okay. So that kind of makes okay. it hard. Okay. Do you recall um, how many had um, biv overalls? Mm, three. <laughs> now I'm guessing. <laughs> there was. Actually, there was one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five. <laughs> you didn't get to watch this very long, so. Okay. <laughs> but see, this is kind of a short-term memory, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. We're just, but, you know, paying attention, visualization, just that, that's just a little exercise. Okay. All right. So long-term memory, and okay. by no means is this like an, a medical <laughs> okay. evaluation okay. of any kind. Okay, <laughs> That's good to know. you. This is <laughs> my job. Is I'm not judging you. It, okay, <laughs> I'm not grading you. Okay, good. So long-term memory. A lot of times we'll take like um, trivia type questions mm -hmm. for people, um, also, and it might be related to the generation they were, you know, brought up in and that. Um, one thing that, and I didn't run this by you, I'll ask you anyway. Can you name the last six presidents of the United States? Inclu including, okay, so mm -hmm. Obama, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Reagan. 
That's five. Carter. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Obama, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Reagan, Carter, then go back forward. Okay. Forward. But you did. Very good. Right. Very good. So can you tell me who's on the $1 bill? George Washington. Very good. <laughs> and then what about five? Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Here How about... Lincoln. Of course I should know that. <laughs> How about the $20 bill? Oh, isn't that Alexander Hamilton? Or is he on the 10? He's a 10. 20. Who is on the 20? I'll ask John. Do you know? I'm going to ask our camera guy. Johnson. John? Jackson. No? Jackson. Andrew Jackson. Yes. I had to get help from off camera. Yeah. The... <laughs> it's a Thanks, shout out. Guys. It's a shout out. <laughs> you can't see them, but there are people off camera helping me, giving me the answers. <laughs> but see, these are just little things, you know, people can, and then they have to retrieve. From farther yes. back, usually. From way far back. When well, we how, about, how about, how um, about, we'll see how good you are in your proverbs. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> how about the early bird? Catches the worm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A watched pot. Never boils. Very good. <laughs> early to bed, early to rise. I can't remember that one. Early to bed, early to rise. John, you know? Makes a man healthy, wealthy, oh. and wise. Yes. Makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise if you didn't hear that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and a lot of the seniors will get, will get those. Because well, those are old-fashioned sayings, and they I would are. guess if you ask some 13-year-olds, uh, they, they maybe might never not. heard of those things. Yeah. Right. They might not. So it's generational. <laughs> okay. The critical thinking, again, is, you know, you're, you're having to pull out and, and problem solve, okay. basically. And so I'm going to give you a series of letters, okay. and you need to tell me what the next letter would be in the series. Okay. You got B, C, D, E, G. Mm, P. And why is that? Because they all rhyme. Because they rhyme. <laughs> very, very good. Very good. I'm going to admit right now, think she it. gave me that Don't one before because I didn't get it. I, I mean, wasn't going to tell on you. I know, but I'm going to be the, you know, the host. Chief. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, what about when can you add number uh, 2 to 11 and get 1 as the answer? 2 to 11 and get 1. Math is my worst subject. 2 to 11 and get 1. I don't know. Don't think of it mathematically. Two to 11 and get one. Now I feel I'm on the spot. I don't know. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> and, and I have the answer, so okay. you know. Okay. Um, it's when you add two hours to 11 o'clock, oh. it becomes one o'clock. There you go. Don't so, think so obviously. Yeah. Yes. Brain teasers, that, you know, any kind of brain teasers like that tests your critical thinking. Okay. They're my least favorite thing. They're mine so it's probably too. the thing I don't, I don't, <laughs> you know, challenge as much, but, um, <laughs> but yeah. Now spatial reasoning is the ability to look at objects uh -huh. and make judgments about their size and their placement. And women, <laughs> the, the, and dimensions. the typical woman that we, we cannot judge, you know, we <laughs> oh, can't no, read no. maps. <laughs> And we can't well, judge, you know, it's like I'm sort of a measure, measure once, cut twice kind of person. Yeah, so. It looks about that size, yeah. yeah. It yeah. looks straight. I'll just eyeball it. Well, we're, I'm going to show a picture here. Okay. And I hope they can see that, but this is an optical illusion, basically. Okay. And you're supposed to tell me what you all see in that picture. Okay, well, I can see it up on the TV. Well, it looks like two old people. Okay, and two then... older people. You can see a chalice or a cup. In the center, Oops. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, hmm, I don't know. It's kind of a scary picture, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. What else is there? There are, um, there is a guy that is strumming his guitar oh, in the face of the yes. older man. Oh, I see, I do see, see him, it yep. Okay. Then there's a man that's holding something on his head in the woman's face. Oh, he's 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 a guy that's got a hat and he's got his arms up. Okay. Yeah. Yep, I see that now. Okay. And then in the man, older man's ear, mm -hmm. there's like a doorway or a archway. Okay. And there's like a figure in it. Oh, sure. I can see you it. See? Yeah, I can see it. I'm watching on the monitor. Okay. So. 
Okay. Wow, that's interesting. So, so there's all, you know, now sometimes people never, never, never see, see this yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's just, you know, depends. But it just kind of expands your mind, gets you thinking more open-minded, you know, to that. That's so. interesting. So those are oh. some things that we can do. We also want to talk about, you know, give us some recommendations for just general good cognitive health. Some other thing, I mean, the brain fitness, that's, that's great. What mm -hmm. are some other things we should be doing? Again, it's, it's almost like, it's kind of rule of thumb. Whatever's good for your heart is mm -hmm. also good for your brain. Okay. So um, the good heart healthy diet, um, the rest, the de-stressing, um, but there's more and more um, research being done on physical fitness mm -hmm. and how it attributes to cognitive health. Mm -hmm. And um, they're saying that it's more of the aerobic physical fitness, you know, the ones that get your heart pumping. Mm -hmm. And because what it's doing is it's getting the oxygen and the blood to the brain, mm -hmm. and that's beneficial. It's, it's getting those um, endorphins and those hormones right. going mm -hmm. as well. Um, and really, if, even if you get out just at least three times a week for 30 minutes mm -hmm. each time, that has been shown to be beneficial. Okay. I mean, any more than that is even better, sure. but even that little is, is good for a person. So, um, you know, we just had a guest speaker uh, last week at a team meeting, and it's, his name's Dr. Art Kramer, and he is a professor of psychology and neuroscience up at Champaign, and big into all of this research. Mm -hmm. And his biggest recommendations for brain health were to stimulate yourself intellectually, mm -hmm. um, was the diet, good diet, good exercise, and the social interaction. Okay. He said, be around people and mm -hmm. interact with people. Mm -hmm. You know, don't isolate yourself. That sounds good. That was his biggest, biggest ones. All right. Well, Sherry, this was a lot of fun. Thank you for coming on and bringing us great information. And it's something easy that we can do any time of the day. We should all start right now. Thank you so much for being on Being Well. We'll oh, see you Thank soon. you for having me.